Lund Boats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. It's all about getting bit when things get tough. Walleyes have the reputation of being finicky feeders under less than ideal weather conditions, where traditionally most walleye anglers would react to finesse tactics to coax a bite. When in reality, the opposite will produce better results. Fast moving, erratic presentations can trigger walleyes into biting by not letting them think if they should bite or not. They react because they just can't help themselves. Ooh, what do we got here, Al? We joined Brett Setterholm and Matt Karstens heading out to snap jig shallow flats after a major storm rolled through. There we go. And Al and James Lindner produce strikes with jig and wraps under flat, calm, bluebird skies. That's a nice one, huh? Two of the toughest walleye conditions anglers can face, using two different presentations at different depths with one thing in common. Ain't no finessing going on here. Hi, I'm Brett Setterholm. This is my friend Matt Carsons. We're here at Gene Sports Shop in Perm, Minnesota. We're going out to Ottertail Lake, hopefully catch some walleyes. We're gonna get some jigging size suckers, and then we're gonna get some jigging size little red tails, and then we're gonna take a dozen larger red tails if we want a long line nose today, but we'll be doing some rib jigging up shallow. Um, so any jigging size minnows just to you know, have that jig coming through the water will be plenty. We just had a couple hour rain delay here. Storm rolled through. Uh, Actually, a pretty big cell went through most of Minnesota here, but we're gonna head out on Ottertail Lake. It's about 14,000 acres. It's one of our biggest lakes here, obviously in our county. Big walleye factories here as far as producing walleyes. Matt and I here are excited. We're gonna get them. So we're just uh, hoping, of course, that the fish cooperate. So you have you know, a lot of ways you can fish them on otter tail. You can shallow fish and jig fishing, uh, rigging um, the shore breaks, fishing bottom mid lake humps. Normally the shallower fish are, are up there for a reason and it's usually they're feeding. So we're gonna hope to pluck a few off and you know, get some of those active fish after the storm went through last, or this morning. See what happens. It's really strange, Matt. We have the lake to ourselves today. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. Big storm this morning. Yeah. High winds. Won't be any competition for the fish. <laughs> no excuses today. Simple technique. Jig shiner. Pick your color. They usually all work want to take and cast out, you know, probably a good cast behind the boat. And you want to run anywhere between that one, uh, one and a half miles an hour. You just let it go back, snap the jig. It's a reaction bite for this fish. So coming by him, basically, if you can imagine having that jig down, if you were underwater watching it, you know, your jig is getting ripped, and then it stops on the back when, when you drop back. So it rips, stops, and falls, rips, and stops. You know, it's kind of imitating a wounded minnow. So 
just a different technique. We're running about nine and a half feet right now. And then we'll roll up back behind us, comes up to a, like a shallow sand sandbar. So it should run up to about six, six feet, six and a half feet. Yep, pretty decent. They like to hang around areas with a little drop. You know, the bait fish will hang off this edge. And then, uh, you know, the walleyes will hang out there and push them up onto these shallow flat, flat areas. Big oh, big smallie. Good smallie. So as you can see, there's a nice smallmouth population in here too, and it's kind of really unfished. A lot of people don't fish for them out here. But, you know, if it comes to a few of these, it feels pretty good. They're fun, pound for pound, they say, that this fish can really fight. Okay, let's go get another one. When muskies start living up to their reputation as the fish of 10,000 casts, it may be time to consider live bait. The real meal deal is tough to beat if catching is paramount to you. Rig big sucker minnows on a quick strike rig and suspend beneath the float. I target fish around large main lake structures with abundant forage. Then take your minnow for a walk around the park. The Minkota Ultrax greatly simplifies boat control with its iPilot link functionality and built-in spot lock for instantaneous digital anchoring. You stay pinned to your spot, hands free when rigging bait, biting fish, and handling and releasing, all without losing your position. You got him. Got him. That a boy. Pretty. Pretty. Pretty dude. Sweet. Musky in the boat. Live bait is a hard, hard presentation to beat in the fall. Any time of the year for that matter. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Typically on these flats, what I look for is um, have some rock piles and and uh, some of the sand grass, and could be right down to a one foot difference. You could be in six foot, maybe go down to seven foot, or um, just little pockets of fish. And I think you know the bait fish like to hang in there. Later, when you're looking at you know July or late June to a lot of your crayfish come up here and they you know, feed on the crayfish. A lot of nice smallies roll around up here as well, so they're, they're kind of fun too. This is a gear I like to use. I like to use a medium sized spinning reel and about a 6.6, six, 6.7 six, six, uh, medium fast uh, tip. Now, lots of people like to use like a braided line, but there's, I like to use a monofilament. I actually like to use some of the lighter line, like this is six pound test. Berkeley XL. Having that mono is a little better than the braided line because when you set that hook, you want a little bit of give, you don't want to rip it, you know, right out of the fish's mouth. As far as the jig goes, I like to use the fireball jig. Um, this is a 16th ounce. Uh, Matt's using an eighth ounce. Um, you know, he'll always, and some people like to run a swivel up above. I prefer just to go straight tie right to the jig. I run it so I come up right through the, the head like that and run it right up through the top. You want to be right in the middle. The wind is pushing, you know, it's coming across. I like to hide down in this corner just so the motor can protect me from the wind. My line is not bowing out so I just like to get down close to the water so I know when I pull my jig has constant contact all the way up, you know, so there's no slack in the line. There we go. <laughs> we might be on to something here, Matt. <laughs> Still, gotta go out. Get another one on there and go we'll get me a bigger one. So we're out here today fishing in the Lund 2075 Pro Guide and, and Brett's chosen the uh, Mercury 200 Verado. Um, the nice thing about the, the Verado is the supercharged power 
and uh, this boat's actually rated for a 200 horse and Brett put the 200 horse on the boat. Um, very, very important in my opinion is to max out those boats. And there's a, for a lot of reasons. Number one is this boat holds a ton of gear. Uh, that Mercury 200 is going to be able to get this boat up on plane, snap it up and get you driving quick. Fuel efficiency is, is another thing in my opinion. Um, and again, a myth of a lot of people that just because, oh, higher horsepower means more fuel. Yeah, but you can cut that back, you know, I mean, all motors will use a certain amount of fuel, um, but cutting it back to that 4,000 RPM category is really going to save you. Mercury's got it figured out, though, with this 200 horse Verado. Um, this Pro Guide is just an excellent, excellent performer with that package, so. Today we're fishing out of the 2075 Pro Guide. This boat is 20 foot 9 inches, 93 inch beam. It has large 22 gallon live well. It has your command center right here. It's got all my gauges right in front of me. So when I'm guiding, everything is right here. We have two drawers here that you could put in numerous Plano boxes for all your gear. Rod storage on the side here. So you just open up the door here, slide your rods in. So here we've got a large capacity rod locker capable of holding up to 15 rods as long as nine foot six. We've got our onboard charger stowed underneath all of our batteries for our trolling motors. Very big front deck, lots of storage options. You got your front live well here. The sport track option, which is capable of holding all kinds of Lund options that they've offered. You know, there's no drilling required. Easy walk around, same level. Guys that like to cast, guys that like to pitch. I mean, it's just at 93 inches wide, it's, uh, it's like a football field on the water. Oh, Matt's got one right now. Yep. Better fish. Good one. Oh, there's a nice one. There we go. That's a nice fish. Good shallow water walleye there. You know, we've had a lot of fish, but not the size we want. These are the kind of quality fish you can get doing your rip jigging. Solid, fat, healthy walleye, Otter Kill Lake. There he goes. Or sharp break right off of an extension. That's what I'm looking for. We'll get bit right there, right on that hard bottom transition. There's one, Al. Ooh. Beautiful day, about a week before the 4th of July, and we're catching walleyes. It's about 80 degrees. Al and I, on the way out here, we were talking about, you know, what's the real key to be, uh, you know, catching walleyes, and how does it differ from uh, any other species of fish? Well, not much, to tell you the truth, but one thing about walleyes, to stay on them, you have to be willing to move a lot. There you go. Just there a nice go. fish. Here you go. Yeah, just pop Before him on the floor here. In, he's all yours, man. Up, I, I'll get that little wrangler out of there. Oh, look at that. He's off. Perfect. Let's, there we go. Boy, is that guy a keeper or is he too big, Al? Ah, uh, he's over. He's over. Unfortunate. I wanted to keep one. You know, one thing that's really important to find walleyes is food. For a good portion of the year, food is the driving factor that determines where walleyes are located in any given body of water. Just gads of bait. And well, he's out talking all to get over out good here. I, I like the spot we're sitting on. Yeah, you can see whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. This, I'm giving you, a, oh, probably a 22 inch here the way she feels. Oh, yeah, nice one. Nice fish. Nice wow. one. Get, Holy get it. mackerel. Yeah, that's a right. good one. Good one. There we go. Ooh, you, Ooh, just came out. Like my rep just no, came you out. You see how much of a nice guy I am? Look at that. Give, 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 me, my fish. Fish. give yeah. me my fish. Give me my fish. I got yeah. him. That's a nice one, huh? Look at that baby. That's <laughs> a good, that, th these are the better ones I was talking about. There's a whole lot of fish in this lake like this. Nice fish, nice fish. You know, Jim was talking about, before I get so rudely interrupted on that fish, about these hard bottom, soft bottom transitions that we're concentrating on, on now where these insect hatches are happening, the perch are eating the insects, the walleyes are following, the per perch are part of the food chain. But it's interesting that hard to soft bottom area is determined on the different basins in the lake. Now, if you got a 25-foot basin, 
the hard to soft bottom transition in a lot of cases is 17 or 18 feet. Then it goes into the soft bottom. If you got a 40 foot basin, that hard bottom transition to soft bottom might be 22 feet. You get a 60 foot basin and it'll be like we're in here, here where it's around 27 to 28 feet. So the different basins, that hard to soft bottom transition, you gotta pay attention to that. Now there's fish can be in every basin using those different transitions, but it changes. It's not the same all over the lake. The basin is everything. A number of presentations would work to catch walleyes that are holding on these hard to soft bottom transition areas. Classic techniques like trolling crankbaits and live bait rigging are effective tactics to catch these deep water walleyes. Today, we're using a far more aggressive pop jigging technique with jigging wraps or ripping wraps. Both of these lures enable you to comb a lot of deep water quickly and target fish that want to bite. The key to this tactic is speed, vibration, and sound to trigger strikes. This is not a finesse fishing tactic. It's more of a high speed search and destroy strategy. That being said, you have to understand we're actively hunting fish on our electronics first. When we see walleyes, we drop our baits to the bottom and simply pop them back to the boat. No strikes, we simply keep moving, looking for more fish. Throughout the course of the day, you can cover a tremendous amount of water. There's one. You got him? Yep. Ooh. Big gal? Ooh. Looks like it. No, I'm I was thinking How the reverse. How about mine? You want a double? Yeah, we could. Oh, we'll just I got a good one really too. Big. It'd be big oh. if we had a double eaters. This, but I don't this think ain't we a got... double eater. Yeah. This ain't a double eater. I'll, this I'll one here you. might. Oh, boy, he That's an it. over. Darn. That's a bummer, bummer. You know, one thing that's really cool about this uh, jigging wraps is actually is the cadence of the retrieve. And depending on the mood of the fish, and uh, it's interesting, it changes. And actually how you actually fish this, ba fish this bait, Al fishes with a pretty aggressive snap. Uh, sometimes I fish it with a slower uh, pop and you know, just pull it up and let it fall back to the bottom. But there is an art to the retrieve. There's quite a few uh, variables you could do with this bait, depending on if you're casting up like I am, holding it in deep water, throwing it to shallow water and fishing it back, or, or are you vertical fishing right underneath the boat? Yeah, you know, sometimes if I'm vertical, you really can snap it and you follow it down and you stop it for a second and a fish will hit it. When I'm casting from deep to shallow, I get m more of a, a swing I got, the strike zone expands more. You, you got another one, Jim's got another one. I got that one on the double pump. It's more of a, almost more of a bass fishing or a jigging retrieve. That's an and eater, I'll, I could I'll tell. I'll show it to you. Yes, it uh, is. Oh, yes, yes. He is perfect. Okay. But I tell you one thing, you look at the conditions we have here, most people would say this is far from really good walleye fishing conditions. He's got another one on. Far from wa ideal walleye conditions, Jim. Perfect. This is my. This is perfect. This is the way I love to fish walleye. You come out at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. That's what a you lot of. You fish till five. You catch 30, 40, 50 walleyes on a jig and wrap. And on, on a particular day, your biggest problem is keeping them up inside or under the slot so you can bring them home. I'm serious now. This method of fishing in summer will outfish live bait. It'll outproduce leeches, night crawlers and spinners, crankbaits, you name it. Once you get the cadence and you know how to fish this bait, you will fish circles around most other presentations in the middle of summer on a day like this when most people are saying, it's the dog days of summer and the walleyes ain't biting. Unbelievable. Look, he's got another one. You know, touchscreen has become such a big part of our daily lives. I mean, we're using it by the hour, heck, by the minute. And when it used to come to electronics, you could only get that in the more high-performance, expensive units. Well, now, with the Lowrance Elite Ti, touchscreen is available from a lower price up to a mid price in a 5, 7, 9, and 12-inch screen. And the beauty of it is the fact it's so intuitive. It has screen setups already built into it where as you can see here, I've got my mapping and my broadband sonar. I can go back in and I go to my mapping and my down scan. I can go back in, go to my mapping and my structure scan if you want, and we'll go into here 
You can see the view, down view, or right, left. If I want to go in and customize my own screen, I can do that by simply sec selecting customize, dragging my information that I want to see onto the screen like that, and I'm good to go. So however you want to set the unit up, you can do that. And you can do that in the five inch Elite Ti all the way up to the 12 inch. So this technology, touchscreen, that used to be only available in high price units, now is available in lower price units that go from five inch screens up to 12 inch screens. Some of those fish are way up there, yeah, yeah, like that one. Got, yeah, I know, like that one. <laughs> eh. I'm not sure. It's, a, it's ah. an over, it's an over. There is always, like I was telling those guy, guys that I fished with the other day, nice one. Anytime you've got a body of water that has a strong population of walleyes in it, they're gonna bite. I don't care if it's summer, spring, fall, or winter. Presentation is everything. And the one thing I learned about reaction baits in the last five years, like this jig and wrap or the rip and wrap, is how incredibly productive uh, a reaction bait can be. And most people haven't experienced it yet to see how deadly that is versus live bait. And uh, I've, I've, everybody that I get out in a boat that are walleye fishermen and see this, they go, wow, wow, I never seen anything like it. You know, we've been doing this for quite a few years now, and there's a, a really, you know, having the right equipment to fish uh, this bait to actually hook, feel, land, and actually fish these baits is pretty critical. This is actually a St. Croix medium action 6'8 Legend Elite. This rod has really the right uh, bend to actually fish this bait. One thing that's really critical, it has a relatively soft tip relatively, so you see that soft tip, then it loads up. So once you actually hook, the fish bites the bait, you load up on them and you got them. When you look at the line itself, one thing that's really, really critical in today's day and age in walleye fishing, so many different guys fish with fluorocarbon. They fish with braid. For jigging wraps, my suggestion, bar none, is fish with monofilament. You will ultimately land more fish with mono. We use a suffix, this is eight pound test, elite. And then one thing you'll notice, we have a, a barrel swivel about 15 to 18 inches above the bait, and then reel. This is a Daiwa Fuego 2000 reel, very incredibly smooth drag. That's the ticket. But now this guy here may make the grade. A few in the pig pen here. You can see what they were actually, some of those fish are eating. You got perch out there, the perch are feeding on the, all the insect hatches that are going on, and apparently some of the walleyes at least are eating perch. And I tell you one thing, this bad boy here really represents those little perch popping around out on the flats. Uh, these fish could be hundreds on a structure. Yeah, you know, and they'll be there as long as the food is there. Yeah, you know, and they're active, you know, they're eating. It could be craws, it could be perch, it could be shiners, it could be insects. And then all of a sudden, when they get done with that pot of, pot of forage and it's thinned down, they're grazing away to another, uh, ooh, another spot. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's Come a here. pretty nice one. Can you get her in there? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's whoa, a, whoa, that could be the, quick, biggie, that could be nice the biggie, biggie of the day, yeah, I suspect. That's a nice one. It, yeah, it, it is. Oh, oh, come here, let me get a lock on it. The wrap came out, if you can get yeah. that out of How's that one look, huh? That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Jim said it's the biggest one of the day. I'm not so sure of that, but it's close. I mean, that's a goodie. Ah. And this is interesting. Look at that mouth, crystal clear. He ain't been e eating any insects, or she isn't. You know what she's doing? She's eating the perch that are eating the insects. That's what she's doing. Whew, I love it. When you look at this fish, think grazers. Schools and schools of walleyes like this, with a mouthful of chompers going like this, doing damage to a school, school of shiners or, or perch or whatever. And, and that's one thing about, ooh, he's got oh. one again. I mean, it's just fish after fish after fish. I know this bait is like the machine, the walleye machine. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, 
check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.